All right, hello everybody and welcome to the second video in the thermodynamics series. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about processes and uh, cycles. So these are important to understand as well for any thermodynamic applications. So uh, when, when something undergoes change, uh, whether it be through heating up or you're applying work to it or there's a chemical reaction, it undergoes uh, what is called a process. So um, let's say you have a, uh, a state that's over here and you want to get to a state that's over here. All right, so you, you undergo some sort of change that goes on and then you get to the end. And that's, that section right there is a process, okay? So these processes are actually quantified or identified by their, uh, their, their path. So their path is what you see as this line going on right here. So the process is from A to B, and it's defined by a path. So process, path. Okay, and to understand how, how much uh, heat or uh, work you have to put into something, um, it's, it's good to, uh, you, you need to understand the path. So the path, uh, to identify the path, you have to know the state which we discussed in our previous video of the component. So if you exactly want to reproduce this, uh, this process you see over here, you would have to know the state here, the state here, 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 you know, everywhere along this point and, you know, infinitesimally amount of states. And, uh, oh, if you hear sound, it's probably my dog moving around. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so it goes through a path which helps you identify the behavior of whatever you're analyzing. So, um, to, to, in, in thermodynamics, there's, there's something called uh, quasi-static, static, or quasi-equilibrium. which is used to define uh, processes. So um, a quasi-equilibrium system is a system that, so say, say you have uh, a piston, right? And then you're compressing this piston, or you're using this piston to compress air in a chamber. So you're doing this, and there's two ways you can do it, right? So you can do it really fast, or you could do it really slow, and um, it might not be intuitive, but the slow, so let me say slow, and then fast. So if you wanted to compress this air that's in here, all these little molecules that are in here, all right, if you do it slowly, uh, like really, really slowly, and if you assume that there is equilibrium, so when the piston is right here, there's an equilibrium position. When it's right here, there's an equilibrium position. Um, if you make that assumption, then it follows the quasi-equilibrium. And this process, if you can, you can think of it as, you know, there's minimal friction going on, uh, minimal losses happening in your in your process. Then uh, it, it's under uh, quasi-equilibrium, and this this actually helps you get the best, uh, the reduced amount of work that you have to apply to the system uh, because there's less losses. So here you would have like a bunch of friction happening. Okay, and it's important to understand that quasi-equilibrium is used to identify uh, like best case scenario uh, of what you're actually trying to do. Okay, so ideally, cut that out. Sorry about that. Uh, dog's name is Rosie, by the way. <laughs> Let's see. Let me scoot on down a little bit. So quasi-equilibrium is good, but it's not very realistic um, in in real life. So where was I going with that? Okay. So with with processes, there's actually different kinds of processes. There is um, let me say process types. So there are things called isometric or not isometric isothermal 
processes which are uh, you keep constant uh, temperature throughout your process. There are uh, isobaric and that is um, constant pressure. There are uh, isochoric which is a uh, constant uh, specific volume. Now, if you don't know what specific volume is, uh, this is actually the inverse of uh, density. So it's in meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, and this is, this is just another way to say density. Um, it, in many books, they try to use the specific volume instead of the uh, density, and it's just a preference thing. It ends up being easier to write sometimes um, as well. And then finally, uh, I just wanted to get to the point where uh, a lot of times in thermodynamics, uh, there are cycles that happen. So you say, what is a cycle? So a cycle is when you have a process where it begins right here, something happens, and then it ends up over here. So I'm going to draw little arrows to say how it's moving, how the process is going. So it follows a certain process path to get to the same location where you are. So you might be saying, why, why would I want to do that? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. But if you think about it, there's, there's something going on in here. So maybe uh, you produced a certain amount of heat that you can use to heat up your house. There's a certain amount of work output uh, when, you're, when you do this cycle. So maybe that work is being used to um, to refrigerate your, refri or your refrigerator to keep things cold. So cycles are good, good things to have because you can extract work and heat and uh, maybe change the state of things and then bring them back for some other reason. I don't know why you would need that, but it's the, the cycles are good. So the, the simplest case I can think of right now is just a car engine. So you have a piston. I know I keep using these simple things, but these simple things will help you understand it better. So you have a car piston, car engine piston. Okay, and what does this piston do? So pistons typically go through compression, um, combustion, I'm going to abbreviate these. Uh, expansion. And exhaust. So let, let's just briefly discuss what each of these things are doing. So when the car is running, you're compressing the air inside the engine because you want the air to ignite better when, uh, when your spark plug fires. Okay. So when your spark plug fires, you uh, release a, a lot of heat. And what does that heat do? It, ex it, may, it increases the pressure in your system. So the pressure drives down the, uh, the piston. And then, so what, when that happens, what that does is it gives you a certain amount of work. This expansion process gives you work. So here in the combustion, um, you're creating heat. Okay, you're adding energy to the system to, uh, from the fuel and then you're expanding it to get the work which goes in the shaft okay um, so that work you would get out of your shaft that work goes to your tires to make your engine move or maybe you're rotating a shaft which is uh, moving a bunch of gears that'll give you some other output that you want and then finally you get the exhaust of the system so essentially what you did is you, uh, you increase the pressure okay when you combust um, you, you apply a certain amount of heat, and I, I'm not going to explain right now what the uh, what the process path it are actually doing. I'm just going to draw a simple diagram for brief understanding. I'll get I'll probably get to these uh, later on. Then you get your expansion, your expansion, and then you get your exhaust, which uh, essentially releases the heat. The Q comes out, and then this. This section inside is the amount of work that you're getting uh, from your system. So this this is a cycle. Okay. So uh, this is just one example. 
So I just want to show you that cycles are good. They, they help us get things that we want done. And in engineering, a lot of times you're trying to optimize the cycles and approach uh, the best lossless scenario that is still going to work how you want it to do, how you want it to work. So um, that's that's all for I'm going to be showing for this video. Uh, oh. uh, please stay stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.